Hi guys, welcome to this video tutorial on ASP.NET Web APIs. This is Tech Howdy. In the previous video tutorial, we created our accounts controller and we created an action method called as get all users, which returns all the users that are registered for application from a database. Now we are going to create two more action methods. One method that will get a single user by the specified ID and get a single user by his or her username. And to do that, we will create two methods, two action methods. So let's create the action method for a web API that returns a user based on his ID. To create our first action method that gets the user by ID, we need to first specify our route. So let's specify our route. Here I have used my route name as user forward slash ID. User because we are just returning one user and not a list of users. And you see my ID, I have specified it within curly braces. That's because my ID is going to change and my user, the API forward slash user, my route name is going to remain constant, but the parameter that's my user ID, it's going to change. GUID, GUID stands for globally unique identifier. And why do we need a globally unique identifier? It's a 128-bit integer number used to identify resources that are globally unique. In our case, uh, our user ID is globally unique, which means every user in our database has a unique ID. And that's what we are telling our route. And then we will specify our action method name. So our action method will be public. And we are going to make an asynchronous request to get the information from our database. Asynchronous means that we are going to run this request in the background. And running the request in the background means we are not going to affect the main thread. So we will create a task and task is to get the IHTTP action result. And we will name a method as get user by ID. To get the user by ID, we need to specify ID within the parameters. So let's create a string parameter and name it ID. Now within our action method, we need to create a variable and we'll call this variable user. What this variable will do is it will store the result that we receive from our action method. So the request will be made to get the user by the ID and the request will return with a response. That response will be stored in this variable user. But what we are going to do here is we're going to use the keyword await. That means we will tell hold the result within this variable and wait till the time it is requested. And that's the reason why we use the await keyword because there will be many calls made within our database uh, for, from to get the information from our database and because there will be many calls made to get different information from a database and all our action methods will be running in the background so they will be returning with results but we are mentioning here to wait till the time the result has been requested because any result that we get we want to verify that result and then send it to the client so we will call our app user manager method and then we will call the find by id method so as i mentioned that the app user application user manager provides us with many methods that we can use to manage our users one of the method is find by, find by id async when we can use it when we are making an asynchronous call and app user manager is a type of instance of application user manager that we created within our application within our base api controller class so i'm calling this same instance because i have inherited from base api controller and i'm using the extended method find by id and i'm going to specify the id that i provided within the parameters And that's it. So it will get the user by the ID and store it in this variable. The next thing what we do is we are going to verify if the information we received is null or no. 
So we will write a condition that will validate for us if the result was null. So if it was not null, then we are going to return OK, which is response to 100. And within OK, with the response OK, we have to specify to return the user that we received from our database. And if the result was null, that we didn't get any user with that specified ID, we are going to return not found. And that should be it for our action method to get user by his or her ID. Now let's test this method. We will click F5 to run our application. Now we will specify the route name API forward slash accounts forward slash and then API forward slash accounts and then the route name for the action method is user forward slash and then we specify the ID of the user. Let's go to our database and get the ID of the user. So the ID of the user we can copy it and then paste it forward slash the ID of the user and then hit enter and now you can see that we have our user's information returned by our web API. We can check the header information by clicking F12 on your browser and then refreshing this page again and then clicking on network and then on network you will see your response 200 that's okay just click on that and then we can see our header information over here. Now, for our header information, if you see that we requested the URL API forward slash accounts forward slash user with the user's ID, the request method was get and the result was we received a status code of 200 OK, which means that the user that we returned was not null and it, it returned the OK that status code for our HTTP and then we have our users information that was returned to us by our API that's the application response that's here now one thing to note here is that we did create the model class over here that we would used to control what information is being displayed in our response because we don't want our web API to return the user's password or some other information. We just want to return the information that is limited. So for that, for that we created the model class earlier that will return the information. Let's implement that model class instance within our action method to prevent displaying data that is not relevant.